Hi, this is Peter Hanami with Japanese Customer News, 28th of November 2015. I've got five stories for you this week. Our first story is about education, and this was re reported by Natasha Bita in The Australian on Wednesday, November 25th. In the article, she talks about some new OECD data that shows that Japan has a gap to fill in terms of teaching salaries. In Japan the current salary is $67,498 and the increase in wages between 2010 and 2013 is just 0.8%. The time students are at school in Japan is 762 hours and the class teaching time is 736 hours per year. This is in stark contrast to America, which is $82,558 per year. They had a 6.3% increase over the last three years. And the, s the student time at school is 967 hours per year. Our second story this week is about high-speed trains. And this is reported by Dennis Shanahan in The Australian on Thursday, November 26th. In his article, he mentions that Japan's new superfast trains, which are capable of travelling in excess of 600 kilometres an hour, and which are directed underground as much as possible, have arrived at the centre of the high-speed rail debate in Australia. It'll be interesting to see how uh, this turns out. They've been talking about it for a long time. Alright, let's have a look at our third story this week. It's about export. Now, Tiwi Islanders have finally succeeded in a 30-year battle, according to Amos Aiken in his article in the Australian Thursday, November 26th. Now, this battle is about bringing the first shipment of wood chip grown in plantation on their homeland north of Darwin to the market. Now at present they've got about 38,000 tonnes due to, to depart for Japanese owned paper mills this weekend and under a five year deal with the large Japanese conglomerate Mitsui they hope to supply up to 400,000 tonnes of chips or 8 to 10 shiploads annually. The plantation project could generate up to $150 million in export income for the Tiwi Islanders. Which is um, Tiwi Islanders um, just um, off the coast of Australia and actually part of Australia. Our fourth story this week is about tourism. Now this was reported by Robin Harding in the Financial Times in the Australian Financial Review on Monday the 23rd of November. Now it seems with the Olympics coming in 2020 that some big restructuring is happening in the accommodation industry. Love hotels are really declining and it's quoted that according to the National Police Association the number of love hotels is declining by 2% a year from 6,259 in 2010 to 5,940 in 2013. Now in the article it mentions that these love hotels are being converted into backpackers so that there's ample accommodation for foreign tourists leading up to the Tokyo Olympics which is great news. Our final story is about wages and this is reported by Stanley White in the Australian Financial Review on Friday the 27th of November. And in his article he mentions that the, the national average minimum wage in Japan is 780 yen or $8.80 per hour Australian. That was last year. And the government's just voted for a 3% increase. And um, in his article Stanley mentions that this small increase w still would not buy more than a bowl of ramen noodles. But the good news is Mr Abe told cabinet ministers he eventually wants to raise the weighted national minimum wage 
to a thousand yen per hour. Well thanks for your company and look forward next week to Japanese customer news.